Summit Fund and we're in Paradise City, an all new Paradise City that's been getting lots of rave reviews this week. One of the reasons why it's getting rave reviews is because we're seeing a lot of flying and one of the flights that we're seeing a lot of people paying attention to is an airplane called the Just Aircraft Super Stoll. I'm Dan Johnson, I'm talking with Troy Woodland and you started off with an idea for a wing that was a little different. I'm going to come up here and close these with my hand but when I let go, you'll see there's two pieces here, and they'll just sort of hop out a little bit, and they'll do it separately. Get a little wind. There we go. What did you have in mind with this? Well, I I didn't want to fix because I didn't want the drag, you know. They're there all the time. All the time. Yeah. And after flying, Gary had a Helio eight years ago when I ah, flew that okay. for the first time. That's where it all started going. Once I seen what the type of flying that we could how we could utilize an airplane with slats. I mean, I, I, I really felt like we needed to build the same thing. Um, the problem with slats or retractable slats on a light sport aircraft is typically when you try to design this in such a small port, you run into restraints on, you know, bell cranks, port tubes, to make all those functions. Just to get all the stuff up in there to do what you inside need to do. The wing. I see. With the 52 inch port, it's hard to do that. But with the hinge, we got, we're enabled to keep everything tight and out front, and we have a lot less parts, a lot less weight, um, and it's simpler because most departure stalls, the pilot was behind the airplane to begin with, <laughs> and so that's why I wanted the slats to take care of the pilot. We've got two pieces, and they don't necessarily operate together. As we saw, one might be out, one might be in. What's the thinking there? Well, there's two things. I, I didn't want at high angles of attack with high horsepower to be able to blow the inboard slat in, potentially pulling the outboard one in also. Um, I don't think that it could, but you know, it's just something that just a precautionary thing. Move, yeah. And then of course it's easier to build things in two sections. And of course the yeah, wing, a lot less stuff then to manipulate carefully. That's right. Okay. And then uh, you know the wings flex. All wings flex. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so we basically have a joint for for everything to flex. Yeah. Too. So these don't these can't bind up in That's the center right. even when the wing is getting some high loading on it. That's right. All right. And uh, they're all on uh, sealed ball bearings. Yeah, you can't really tell that in the video, of course, but that motion is very fluid and smooth. And there's no jitter as it moves. It's, that's why bear, using bearings to make that happen. That's correct. Well, we looked at the leading edge, but the trailing edge has had some treatment here, too. Uh, it's a pretty big looking flap you got here, Troy. <laughs> was I tried to make the flap as large as I could and still make the folding wing and stay under 8.6 right. watt. Remember, this is a folding wing aircraft. So. And so, basically, what I had left on the trailing edge, I wanted to utilize flat. And of course, it's a big flat, so I needed to build, you know, a deep port aileron also. So I had to roll because that's the hardest part of building a stole airplane is keeping roll control. So when you did this, did that have any effect on how you designed the tailplane, or did the tailplane take any change because you did this and what you did to the leading edge? We did increase the surface area on the tail, but it was more, in essence, because we were flying so much slower. Ah, okay, just to get, just to give it more to total give surface it, area. That's correct. Because this combination allowed that slower, much slower flight, and so you had just had to have more working lever arm back here in a sense. You could have either extended the tail, which would have been a lot of extra work, and made the airplane too big, or make the surface better. So what surface got larger on the tail? Maybe we can step back over here. And look at that and look at that. We increased the surface area on the horizontal staff and the elevator itself. It's another very deep, I mean, the cord of the elevator is bigger than the cord of the horizontal stabilizer. That's, that's, that's right. And that's some of what you added to was on this surface, on both surfaces. Oh, okay. We just, we just made them overall bigger. Did you and get we any dropped, wider as well? Yeah, we okay. went from a uh, little under uh, um, um, eight foot to eight and a half. Oh, it, when it's folded, it's eight and a half feet wide. It's legal to on it. Okay, so now finally we've looked at the leading end. We looked at the trailing end. We looked at the tail feathers a little bit, but you still weren't done. Now, when I came and visited you in the factory. You were you were pondering another big change. That was to the landing gear. That that is true. All right, why don't we go up front and have a look at the landing gear? Well, after you got done with all the wing work, 
there was still more to do because now you realize you had an airplane that could perform in a way you were aiming at, but you, you had more to do. That, that is true. So you got the big boy tires on here and some gear to match. What all's going on here? Well, the wing was allowing us to basically pull the power off, pull the stick to the stop, and descend it by myself. You know, it's five to seven hundred, seven hundred feet per minute, and take it to the ground with no flare, or no added power. And so on the prototype, they put the wing on it, and I realized real quick that I was going to start having landing gear failures with... Because you'd have a lot of load all at once. That's right, the shock load. Right. And the conventional gear, it, it just wasn't going... There's no way it was going to be able to take it. So this, this idea, I, I've had this idea years ago. Years ago, I actually had the components eight years ago to do this. So people look at this, uh, a young fellow came up here and said, well, how come such a big tire? And I just heard you give the explanation, so I'll repeat it. The, the tire isn't about taking the shock load. The tire is big to accommodate a rough surface that a regular tire might kind of dig in on. Is that it? That's true. It's basically cheap insurance for something you didn't see on a couple of your flybys. Now, in our conventional landing gear, I would always run the PSI down around 3 PSI. And they actually, we, they were, they were actually working as landing gear. You can do a lot of things with these bush wheels on conventional gear you, you cannot do with the small 706s, 806s. Sure. They just, they, they, they take a lot of absorption. But on, with this suspension, I pump the tires up, I'm running 7, 8 PSI on the tires now, more than double, and the suspension is utilizing it's, the The shock. magic is happening here then, That's about correct. taking the load up so that it doesn't get into the airframe, doesn't overload the wings negatively or things like that, is that right? That's, that is true. And, and what I'm seeing here, is this, or is this a stroke length that we're working with, a, you know, maximum stroke length? Yeah, the, probably not quite all of that. Almost, but. it's 12 inch, this is a 12 inch, this is a 12 inch stroke on this on this shock and we we offer a 10 inch stroke for the guys that are wanting to run a smaller tire and the difference between the stroke is at full compression i did in a smaller tire i wanted to still keep clearance for the prop yeah. yeah yes this is keeping you off keeping the prop off the ground it's not that that's right okay but now okay so you use the term progressive load Explain what progressive loading is. Well, the, the shock, the shock loads progressively. It, it as it starts increasing, it starts, it starts uh, getting harder. The further in, the further in the compression gets, That's the right. more it resists that. That's right. But not at first so much. Not it's at easy first. at first, harder, 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 harder. Yeah. And with this particular shock. As it starts getting harder, the gear starts spreading out, and it starts getting a mechanical advantage over the strut on that full deflection. So it keeps driving it in. Um, oh, I see. You get a little more of a lever arm. More lever arm because they're see. starting okay. to par parallel each other, sure, right. and it's and it's taking that last okay. bit in even even. You know, all more. right. So the tire's not doing it. It's the stroke that does it. But all that's got to go up into an airframe. Did you do anything different up here? I mean, I see a great big old bolt up here, but I'm not, that's not the magic, I'm not thinking. Is there any difference to the structure? Yeah, there to accommodate the loads that will be important to the airframe. Yeah, there absolutely. We we what we did is we built a truss. There's about a five inch truss. Right back up. Oh yeah, I feel it up in there. Okay. Yeah, that's built across the back of the panel. Um, a lot of guys are complaining about putting all their avionics in there with that big truss in there, but, I see. but you guys figure that out. That's, that's second to what we really need. Well, we got one more thing I want to go back and look at, and literally back toward the rear of the airplane, because shocks on the, on the main gear, that's not so uncommon on airplanes, but shocks on a tail wheel, well, it kind of shocks me. Let's go have a look. A three-point landing can load, put some loads on the tail, and you're already coming in at high angles, and the tail wheel is frequently touching down first, from what I see. So, what have you done here to accommodate that need? So we got the mains done, and I'm flying it at that point in time, and I'm I'm really wanting to do hard three-point landings, full, 
power off, sticks Stick back, back and all just the hold way. it there from downwind all the way to, to final. <laughs> and and uh, well, let's have a demonstration of what you did here with a shock loaded tail wheel. Troy's going to lift up the whole runner of the airplane and drop it down there, and you're going to see what it does. Looks like that ought to turn out worse than it does, but it just absorbs the load and it's all over. Actually, I've been over 900 feet a minute. Is that right? 900 feet a minute at the point of touchdown. Yep, at the point of touchdown. That's the kind of thing we normally try to avoid, Troy. Yeah, <laughs> but with this, you can pull it up and pull the power off and come down more like a parachute. And just stay straight. And just stay straight. Not have to cock it, you're saying. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, all that, all your energy is going in that direction. So when you hit the ground, all that energy is, the, the shocks absorb the energy. Once it comes to a stop, then the energy starts going forward. So it displaces all that energy that's in that direction. Just dissipates it. Just right like that. that yeah. And, and another added value with the shocks is once it does compress the suspension, the center of gravity of the airplane gets real low. So my braking power is really well, yeah, much higher. Yeah. And uh, and by the time I never thought of that extra bonus, but. Yeah, by the time, like this morning, I was landing with the brakes, the tires were locked up, and the, there's wet grass, and they just slid to a stop with no risk of nosing over. But like on my place, with the 20 degree angle, you know, if you see video of it, I land, I hit, the suspension compresses, I'm under major braking at that point in time. By the time the suspension starts unloading, I'm off the brakes, the tail's coming up, and then it's done, and I set it back down. Well, we've watched people just be amazed at the way you're handling the airplane out here, and you even said that you weren't pushing it all the way to the stops, and it's still getting everybody's, I see jaws dropping all the time when you come into land. So you've gotten good reception. You had a previous model, the Highlander. How's the high, how many Highlanders have you, in kit form, have you put out there in the marketplace? We've done in the Highlander slash Escapade, a lot of them have been converted from Escapade to Highlanders. We've done over 300. Over shit. 300. But speaking, are you doing more of these than Highlanders right at this moment? Yeah, right now we're probably doing 10 to 1. But what we've done is I've actually had a couple people already. We made a kit for the landing gear that has the truss, has all the lower part of the airframe and everything. It's all pre coked ready to go, ready to be welded up. And they can purchase the, the whole you know those components and the landing gear and uh, of course so you can add all this part it to is an existing highlight that's that it that's right um, how about the wings of course uh, the wings we can do the same um, um, person could be flying his airplane and build his wings and get his landing gear stuff together and bring it in and and, and it, it, it would take him probably less than a week to to, to retrofit, retrofit it. And, uh, <clears throat> Excellent. Well, you got a lot of airplanes out in the field. Um, this one has gotten you some special attention, but you know, going back to Escapade and Highlander, uh, how long has Just Aircraft been around? Just Aircraft was formed, I believe, in uh, it was around 2002. 2002. So you're, you're only 11 years into this thing, and you've already got uh, quite a nice little following of airplanes. And some very loyal customers, I know, that uh, really love what you do, Troy. And, partner Gary Schmidt and the whole rest of the team there, Harry and all of them back there in Walhalla, South Carolina. An interesting facility if you get a chance to go visit them and when they can accommodate you, some, give them a tour or something like that. Fun place to go visit. Uh, Troy, tell us more about how we get more from the company, how we contact you, give us a web address. Well, like Dan says, you know, if, uh, if you're ever passing through, we're more than, more than we do. We'd love to accommodate you. Yeah. We'd love to show you around, even go flying, uh, meet, meet all the people. And uh, you can do that by uh, just logging on to justaircraft.com and uh, phone numbers, everything's there to, to schedule it. We'll do our best. Come and get some of that good southern hospitality. You were very gracious to my wife and I when we came to visit. We were really, really glad we did. Well, good. Good, good. I've got lots of information about Just Aircraft. Over the years, I've flown, I think, just about everything you've had. Getting ready to go fly this one. We'll add that to it as well. Lots of videos, news, other things on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Paradise City.